Hey everyone, I wanted to come to you all today and talk about micro purchasing. So I did a little snippet on another channel and I did a snippet on my Instagram, but I wanted to get into the full description of what micro purchasing is and um, how to get started and what that means and what that means in the federal government and the local government right after the intro. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Here on the Shunapreneur channel, I share information about government contracting, veteran business content and other business tips. So with micro purchasing, you may have heard of micro purchasing and you may have heard of the simplified acquisition. Now they're kind of like cousins when it comes to purchasing. So if you want to think about it as a dollar amount, the micro purchasing goes up to $10,000. So that is $10,000 that the government can spend um, without them having to get permission or necessarily get permission externally, like uh, following the, the FAR. Um, they can do it internally as a, a section. Like if you look at the Department of Defense, when it comes to different departments like uh, the supply section, the IT section, the, the logistics section. So with those, they can have an internal micro purchasing power up to $10,000 to just buy goods. They just have a credit card and they swipe on Amazon or with a contractor and they just buy what they need. So the simplified acquisition on the other hand is anything $10,001 up to $250,000. Now the $10,000 threshold has just been increased from $3,500 in the last uh, few months actually within the last year. And then the simplified acquisition went from $150,000 to $250,000 since COVID. So those numbers, you may see some other numbers um, when you're doing your own research, but right now as it stands, uh, for those who are watching this video in 2023, uh, this is June, 2023, 10,000 for micro purchasing and 250,000 for simple simplified acquisition purchases. So what does that mean? So with the $10,000 micro purchasing power, they can just swipe the card. But when it comes to the simplified acquisition, they do still have to get three qualified uh, bids for whatever goods or services they may need. So they don't have to put it out for bid. They don't have to go through the whole process of reviewing the technical piece and also the pricing and making sure that it's based on whatever regulation that they're following, whether it's federal or local contracting. So when it comes to simplified acquisition versus, versus micro purchasing, they kind of looked at as the same. The agency can actually call you and say, hey, can you give me a price for this? If it's over $10,000, then in your mind, you know it's simplified acquisition when it comes to federal. When it comes to the $10,000 re uh, restriction or budget that an agency cardholder will actually have using a GPC card, which is a government purchasing card, they don't have to go through the formalities of, uh, they have to inform their leadership, of course. It's not like they just take this secret card and they just swipe. It's basically saying that this card holder has to, of course, they have to go through some sort of training. They have to go through whatever their protocol is in order to be a card holder. So now that the person um, in the agency is a trusted card holder, they have a limit of up to now $10,000 where they can purchase things that are you know, needed for whatever section that they're in or whatever um, department that they work for. So if you just really, really a reminder that it's usually within a small sector of a of the agency. So an agency may have five different departments. They have the IT department, the logistics department, the mechanic department, the whatever administrative department, and each of those departments have their own credit card internally. So it's not just like $10,000 for the whole uh, unit or the whole agency. It's usually for that one singular department within an entire agency where they have the micro purchasing power that a cardholder or two has the power to buy goods and services. Simplified acquisition, it's more like a lower contract. Now there are are some contracts that go out for bid that are way less than 250,000 so it's like well why would they use the simplified acquisition method there are several methods that agencies use in order to procure services so it's the same thing as why would they use set asides instead of just awarding it to whomever so it's like they have to use different methods in order to meet whatever goals that they have so simplified acquisition is less paperwork and they may need something quick um, or it's a fast turnaround and they know that there are several agencies out there, several several contractors out there who can provide this service. So for them, they're like, okay, great. I can put this out for simplified acquisition. It's over $10,000, but I don't want to put it out for bid because I don't want to just get a whole bunch of people uh, bidding on this contract or trying to send RFPs and everyone has to go through it. 
um, and read through it and make sure we're following all the regulations. So it's best for us to put it as a simplified acquisition because it's simple. It's something that's probably gonna be very, very easy to be able to dissect if the contractor knows what they're doing, like they have a full understanding. Like we need to buy apples <laughs> and a whole lot of them, okay, for say an event. So simplified acquisition will probably be the best bet because if you put it out for bid and everybody's gonna be like, I can provide apples, but if you put it out for simplified acquisition, then usually you're gonna have some contractors in mind or you're just gonna pick one, two, three, give me a quote, what's the price? Okay, it's over 10, typically over 10,000, under 250,000. And of course, that doesn't mean that they're just gonna max it out at 250,000. That just means that the agency has a reasonable understanding of what the price would be for 1 million apples. I don't know, just throwing a, a number out there. But that just means that the agency is like, okay, it's probably gonna be over this, over $10,000, under $250,000, or it better be actually, it better fall within those parameters. And then we're gonna put it out as a simplified acquisition get our three quotes and then we sign the contract. When I was first getting started trying to figure out what micro purchasing was, it just seemed so unclear to me. Micro purchasing is really not a thing you necessarily pursue. It's more like a way that the government, the agency is buying your stuff. If you're registered in SAM, you can still get micro purchases, simplified acquisition type contracts without you having to put it, look for bids or look for RFPs, look for RFQs, and they could actually come to you. They could, the agency could reach out to you as a contractor and ask for a quote from you. And they're essentially, they're getting three quotes that they need for this to buy apples. And then this, with the micro purchasing, that's even a little way less competition typically. Um, they just need a service done they know what their budget is. It could be 10,000, up to 10,000. So that doesn't necessarily mean also that that particular department head or that GPC card holder actually has $10,000 that they could use on that card, but that it is up to 10,000 to be considered a micro purchase. So say they know that this pressure washing is only gonna be 9,000, they're like, cool, we're gonna use a GPC card. Now there's also, let me just say this real quick there are limits on how much they can spend per month, per quarter, per whatever. And that's based on the agency. It's based on the FAR and it's based on the agency and it's based on the department and whatever their internal controls are. But just because it's up to 10,000 does not mean that that's what you're gonna get. And sometimes they have them split where one person has 3,500 on their card, the other person has 4,500 on their card. So this person that you're talking to, you're talking to Bob, Bob only has 3,500 on his card and Jeff has 4,500 on his card, but Jeff don't like you even though he has more money on his card. So Bob is the person that's gonna be swiping the card for the pressure washing service that you're providing for say just a small one side of a building, I don't know. And so with that, you know, sometimes they're able to tell you how much they can spend with you. So that's a really key point because if you've done any bidding yourself yet, um, if you're not brand new, brand spanking new, then you know that if and you talk to agency uh, procurement officers and that type of thing, or even facility managers or whomever is in charge of this project, sometimes, almost all the time, they're not gonna give you the pricing that you should be working with. It's more like you need to do your own research and maybe if you mention a price, they might, give you like a wink, like, okay, you're on target, but by law, they're not supposed to give you any advantage over another contractor. So just keep that in mind. But when it comes to micro purchases, they can say, look, I only got 3,500 on this card. So what can you give me for that? And sometimes that, that's how you're able to execute certain contracts. And it, it's still considered a government contract. Like that's still a part of your past performance. Even if you do something for 1,500, 1,000, 500 dollars. If you're doing, if you're delivering apples and you get 500 dollars, you just executed a government contract. Like it's the same thing. You don't have to always go through the rigmarole in order to say that you're a government contractor. You literally just, you know, can use it. It's just like having a regular client, whereas they are um, wanting to buy apples from you, and you have the Apple plug and they're saying, I need to use my credit card. And you're like, great, I can accept credit cards. And that is when you go into um, possibly getting on a GSA schedule, which like 
a government contractor's Amazon. So if you get on a GSA schedule, you've basically already been vetted by GSA or by like Amazon if you want to use a commercial comparison. You've been entered into this system where the government is going to buy its services and products. So whatever service or product that you have, say you sell apples, you put your price on there like, hey, all my apples are a dollar a piece, right? But there's gonna be 20 other companies that are like, my apples are 105 a piece or 99 cents a piece or 85 cents a piece. So you're kind of like in this pool of uh, other companies that they're gonna, you know, the agency can choose who they wanna buy from. So when it comes to the GSA schedule, that's another way that the agency can just buy from you. They just, here, order up because you've already be been vetted into the GSA schedule system. So it's kind of like if you get a GSA schedule, then you're almost operating at that much simpler level if an agency actually buys from you. And from what I understand, if an agency doesn't buy from you, if you're on a GSA schedule, it's because your price is probably too high. Or it's possible that you don't have enough experience because I know GSA schedule, you have to be in, I have a business for two years you can get a waiver maybe but that's just i guess a topic for a whole nother video but basically what i'm saying is the micro purchasing is um ten thousand or less simplified acquisition is ten thousand and one dollars to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars where they the agency can just get three quotes from contractors and they choose which one it's a lot less paperwork and then you can uh get your contract and ride off into the sunset it's still considered a government contract now there is a little bit of that on the on the uh, local side but as far as i know there's no specific name for every county or city or state that would have a, a name across the board for these types of purchases now they do have like they might use another word instead of micro like smaller purchases or mini purchases or just credit card purchases but it's you know they have some flavor of buying a smaller amount and not having to put it out or have other contractors come out and give them uh quotes so just want to kind of give a little expound on the micro purchasing a little bit more in my course of course you know i teach three-tier contracting um, my course is called govcon now and i teach you how to do federal local and corporate contracting for the topic for today about micro purchases corporate doesn't necessarily fall into that lane but I do teach about federal local and corporate contracting um, and I have a community the GovCon money community that um, please join and join the conversations that we have in there there's a lot of positivity and a lot of help that we exchange throughout the platform it's free to sign up the link will be in the description and please let me know if you learned anything new about micro purchasing or simplified acquisitions Please let me know if there's anything else, any other types of videos you want me to go into or expound on. Let me know if you want me to expound more on the GSA schedule. I will do some research for you guys and let you know how that process works and what you need to do. I would love to hear more about your government contracting journeys. Please, please, please share those in the comments. That means a lot for a lot of people. When I was coming through the, through the ranks of government contracting, um, and even before I started my business at all and still was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, hearing those stories really, really helped me and it let me know that I can actually get out here and do this. And you can get out here and do this. But before you get out here and do this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. So until next time, it's your favorite veteran.